criteria for the films in this festival is uh, films that are audacious, cutting edge and courageous, um, have an emotional impact and, and a, an unusual way of treating this subject matter. For me it's always how a film best achieves what it's trying to do in the first place. It's great to have the film selected, it's great to be here and um, it'd be, it's quite terrifying thinking what a Sydney based audience, an Australian audience is going to think of the film but um, hopefully but they'll like it. Yeah, it's an honour to be here with the home audience and see what they think of our, of our little baby. The Sydney Film Festival was one of those great early big film festival experiences for me. You get used to going to film festivals and seeing a film with audiences, but when you come to a big one and you're in a venue like this, it's uh, there's something about it that makes you feel like you've you've, you've hit the big stage. I was ecstatic because I think it's such a beautiful, beautiful, gentle and joyful, happy kind of film. I thought. It's a very unique Australian film. There's nothing like it, and Shirley really deserves it. I always have a thrilling time at the festival, but it's very scary when you're in a movie and it's opening the festival. It's scary, so I'm a bit scared tonight, to tell you the truth. But otherwise, when you're not, it's, it's more kind of relaxing and um, you're having a great time. I thought, oh, that's lovely. It's lovely to open the festival with a you know, we're the Aussie movie that's going to do it, so I thought that was great. Yeah. How Immortal Seduction, the vampire movie retrospective came about is that uh, Claire and I were working on, a, on another retrospective and for technical reasons we couldn't do that and we were sitting around thinking, well, what, what, could, what could we do? And Claire came up with the idea of vampires. She thought it was a very good time to look at vampire cinema. I love vampire movies because they were really the first movies that I saw. I remember being about 10 or 11 years old, watching the creature feature late at night on TV. And truly the, the first film I can really vividly remember seeing was a hammer horror vampire movie starring Christopher Lee. And what I think is special about vampires is they are us in a way. It's not Frankenstein or the Wolfman. It's not a hideous mutant creature. They're sexy and seductive. There is that element of, of willing submission to a vampire that you don't have with other movie monsters. And I think that's why vampire cinema has been such a strong force over the years. A great example of how the vampire cinema has changed over the years is a film like Near Dark, which was directed by Catherine Bigelow. Now, Catherine Bigelow won the Oscar, of course, for The Hurt Locker. And this is the first film that she directed as a solo directing assignment. And it was made in 1987. And the vampires in this film are nothing like the vampires of Bram Stoker. These are vicious, almost rock and roll outlaw vampires. And they're more like serial killers than they are vampires. That reflected the period in time in the 1980s when there was suddenly a great media awareness and a great media excitement about this phenomena of of serial killers. And if we go back a bit earlier with, with Dracula 1972, we find the vampire coming out of the Victorian era into sort of swinging London, into glam rock London. So wherever cinema has gone and wherever society has gone, the vampire has gone with it. That's why I think there is this immortal appeal of the vampire film, because it, can, it, it changes as the world around it changes. The truth about Australian vampire cinema is really there is no Australian vampire cinema. Until the Spearig brothers made Daybreakers, which ended up being a huge box office hit, there are really five or six possible films you could call Australian vampire movies. And I'm really thrilled that we've got one of them in this program. It's called Thirst. It was made in 1979. It was produced by Tony Ganane. And I'm really thrilled that at the festival, we'll have a QA and a at the session with Tony following the film. Now, what I love about Thirst is that it takes a lot of the supernatural elements away from vampirism. And it proposes the drinking of blood as the ultimate aristocratic act by this elite society of people.
two films in the program that will be playing at the Sydney Opera House with live music and special sound effects. The, the first film is Nosferatu, the, the, really the first vampire film, the great classic from 1922 directed by Murnau. And the second film is the most recent film that we have. It's called Dracula Pages from a Virgin's Diary and it's made by Guy Madden. Guy Madden scored a huge hit at the Sydney Festival last year with a film called My Winnipeg. And he makes films that look like they were made in the silent era. So it's a really nice combination to have the first vampire film made in 1922 playing as a special presentation with music by Darth Vegas, followed by Dracula Pages from a Virgin's Diary, which was made in 2002 and looks like it could have been made in 1922. I'm really thrilled to be showing Daughters of Darkness particularly, which is a fabulous example of this a very European type of vampire cinema that came into prominence in the late 60s and early 70s when censorship was breaking down and the Europeans were able to do much more with, uh, with all their movies, including their horror films. And it's a, it's a fabulous example of where the art film and the exploitation film meet. It's filmed in this dreamy, hypnotic, very arty kind of way, and yet it's got a lot of sex and violence and blood. It's got all of those very, very juicy elements. So it's a fantastic mix of, of styles. Valerie? Valerie, what's happening? What's wrong here? Huh? The balcony. There was someone on the balcony. <laughs> There's no one there. But Ilona's window's open. Maybe she heard something. Stay where you are. I'll go and look. <laughs> you couldn't wait, could you? And I think it's important when you're curating something like this that you never lose sight of the fact that you, you, you're always a fan. Yes, you're curating and you want to do a very a good and, and serious and proper job about presenting something at a film festival, but you, you've always got to keep that element of excitement and, and joy in cinema that you've always had since you were a kid and you first became a fan of the movies. Uh -huh.